What's happening, everybody? It's Riley P from Sports Pain News. So here's what I got. I've been trying to think about what's been interesting come draft time. I've wanted to do this earlier, report more news, but I've been on the weather. Um, still trying to uh, recover, honestly. But anyways, so what I have here is I've been looking around the draft boards. And I actually have one where I don't have to be an exclusive member. You could go all by it. It's the Pro Football Focus Board. The only downside is that where they value the quarterbacks. So essentially, they have all the talent. They have the Pro Football Focus list. They have the ADP list. So with that said, the only reason I think this is inadequate is because they have Kenny Pickett about the 40th overall as far as talent and maybe the fourth best quarterback, maybe fifth best quarterback in this draft class 2022. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get right to it. So I'm just going to hit a couple of buttons. We got a little bit here. We got a little bit there. There we go. So you're going to see everything up top. It's just my writing, YouTube, StreamYard, whatever. We're going to go seven rounds. We're going to get this sped up. We're going to do Panthers. And then uh, at the end, it's going to give us a grade of how we did. So we're going to start the draft. And again, I'm not going to force any trades. Well, I think the best thing for them to do is keep in mind, there's going to be a lot of people in the Panthers organizations that are going to want to keep their job. So, oh, for next year for trade, uh, you know, we need to do something. Okay, so right now we got the Falcons interested to move up two spots. Seahawks for three spots up. Not a lot of depth in the middle, honestly, which is kind of disappointing. Realistically, I would like to see, uh, let's say, the Ravens. I wonder if they would actually... Uh, not interested completely. Okay. So let's see. We go to the Seahawks. Where are they willing to give up? So it says right here, your team owner will veto. Two third round picks and a second round pick exchange for the first to trade down. Go for it. Why not? We're going to resume the draft. I'm assuming they're going to take a quarterback. No, they picked a corner. Okay, whatever. So, again, we could trade here. I actually think this was going to be a pick for a quarterback regardless. I don't see the Texans trading, the Commanders. I don't see trading. The Saints, well, I'm kind of iffy about that. I really am. As far as Cowboys, that's not a Jerry move at all. So realistically, I'm just going to take a player, and that's because he is available. Now, I think realistically, it's going to come down to, and this is where I say the rankings are just awful. I think Kenny Pickett will be drafted in the first round regardless, and the same thing with Malik Willis. Matt Corral, I don't know. I'm not sure how many teams will take a quarterback. But for here on this pick, I'm going to take Malik Willis from Liberty. And since we actually have a second-round pick, we're going to address the needs. So the first one is obviously quarterback. So we got Malik Willis, and we solidified getting the second-round pick. So defensive-wise, I'm actually thinking wide receiver is okay. Secondary, I think, is all right. But linebacker right here. Now, I've been switching between uh, Asamoah and Chenal. I'm just going Leo Chenal. Linebacker, Wisconsin. And we got a whiles to go here. So, granted, I think that third-round pick could hurt a little bit for depth, but it depended on the size and the conference you got in. I think there's going to be some depth at offensive linemen. And worst case scenario, usually, you see, we got one that falls in our lap here. Zach Tom, 6'5", almost 300 pounds. 
pass grade of 92.1. Even if he converts to guard, and in most cases they do, that's a depth position they need. Offensive lineman is key. So I'm kind of thinking, I mean, could they use a tight end with hands? Yeah. But it's not too important. Corner, interior defensive line. Let's see what they got for here. Eh. I mean, they got him on the board, but there's just nothing on him. I wonder why. Let's see, a little more size. I mean, don't even have the age? Come on, man. I'm going to just go Chris Paul on this one again. Need it for the position. All right. So. If you really want depth because you want an R backup run back, you can go Hassan Haskins. Would you want to do uh, Tyquan Thornton, wide receiver, for some depth? For, eh, especially since uh, Shai Smith got arrested. You can, technically. Well, let's see what we got on the board here. Let's just see. Josh Rivers... 6'6", 317. Again, I just see the line folding and folding and folding and rotate guys, find their positions, something. He's definitely on my list. I don't think he'll last long. But, I mean, this is just me. With McCaffrey not accounted for, and then you have Sam Hubbard, would you want to take a running back? Late in the round to 199 overall. I say, why not? Heck, I even heard of a, some guy said, Could we put Christian McCaffrey over a wide receiver to maintain his health? And I was just stunned. Let's see. Ironically, this is a tight end that's working with Kenny Pickett. Needs to work on the hands a little bit, but this team does need a tight end. And this late in the draft, I mean, you could really go anywhere. Virginia Tech isn't uh, isn't as good of a school as it used to be. We got our offensive line. We got this. Eh, try and put a tight end that could catch the ball a little bit. And let's see how we did. Now, keep in mind, the quarterback grade is going to be awful for the most part. I've tried this a few times, and it goes from there. So we got an A-plus draft. And for what we got for that trade with Seattle, they mark it good. But you see, B-minus for Malik Willis, when some people think he's the best quarterback in the draft. Okay, do whatever you want to do. Leo Chanel, again, that was based on need. Was it a reach? I don't think so. Again, 40th pick, 35 overall on the PFF board. I don't think so. But then we go down the line. Two stud tackles, a run back with potential, and a tight end is a throwing piece, but you need something on the depth chart. And again, with the trend of all these tight ends being on the franchise tag, them making over, what, $10, $11 million? And some of them are going to be scrubs. I mean, again, outside of the Waller, the Kelsey, I'll throw in Zach Ertz, I'll throw in Gesicki, but I see some of these tight ends making way too much money, basically what wide receivers should be making, and it's terrible. Is George Kittle worth it? Yeah, but he needs to stay on the field. So, we stop sharing the screen. I'm back here. You see my ugly face? Not really. <laughs> so, I just think, depending on where you trade back, and I, that's what I recommend to get more depth pieces, and not for next year, so we can do for this year. Because, again, if you are Matt Rule, if you are the GM, if you are some of the coaches, 
your job is on the line. Tell me what you think. Take it easy. This is Sports Pain News with Rally P. Take it easy.